Hey, this is Joe Webby, owner of Vivo Design in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I'm here today to help you put together a basic toolbox for drywall or sheetrock. Now, whether you're flipping a property or you're remodeling a project within your own home, I'm going to be here to offer step-by-step -step guidance to your entire project based on my 15 years of experience as a remodel contractor. So, let's get started on the toolbox. Also, you can go to our blog after this video and there'll be a printable checklist on there for all the tools that we're going to discuss in this box today. Now, when you start your sheetrocking process, you're going to need a tape measure. You're going to need to measure how much sheetrock you need. And you're also going to need this to apply the sheetrock. You'll have to be making different cuts and so forth. When you're making your cuts, you need to mark your measurements with the sheet with uh, some type of marking tool, which can be a pencil or a pen marker. And if you're not certain on how to read a tape measure to make these marks, you can check out our how-to video of how to read a tape measure. <coughs> also found on our website. Now, there's another tool now that you use for marking, and these are for long straight lines, and what it's called is a chalk line. Basically what it is is a little box here that holds a string on a spool. There's a fine chalk that's within the box and it gets covered on the string. And what you can do is make two marks across a piece of sheetrock, pull this chalk line, hook one end on one mark, hook the other on the other, and then you strap the line, you snap the line. And it ensures a nice straight cut, which is pretty important in the installation of the sheetrock. Another tool we have for that is known as a T-square. And this happens to be four feet in length, which is the standard width for all drywall. And this is something where you can hang on one side and mark a very straight line going down the, the middle of it or wherever you need to make that line and, and get a nice straight cut as well. And it'll offer as a guide for your, for your blade that you're cutting with. Now, cutting. Utility knife razor, whatever it is, but this is one of the tools that gets used quite a bit, especially when you're hanging drywall. This is a primary tool to, to make all of your cuts. You'll use this in conjunction with the T-square. You place this where you, you need to make your cut, and you run that right down the board. Sheetrock isn't cut right through on the first pass. You score the sheetrock, and then you break it in half, and then you cut the back side. That's an important thing to know, but you'll be able to see more about that in our video of how to install sheetrock. Another cutting tool for the sheetrock, the actual drywall, is a hole saw. And what you do is you use this for cutting out around your outlets and your light boxes in the ceilings. And this will give you a nice tight cut and keep, keep things real smooth as far as the installation of the sheetrock. Otherwise, you'll find yourself spending a lot of extra time on the mudding and the taping, which again is in another how-to video here on the website. Okay, the installation of the sheetrock. Once your sheetrock's cut and formed for the space it's going to be applied to, it gets screwed into the wall typically. And any screw gun will work. I prefer battery powered because they're extremely portable. There are some screw guns that are designed specifically for sheetrock that have screws on a magazine and essentially all you got to do is just keep holding that trigger and putting the, the screws in where they need to go. These ones here you actually have to place a screw on the tip every time and it slows you down a little bit. Both of them are fantastic but this is, you do need a screw gun to install the sheetrock. With that screw gun you're also going to need a screwdriver because not all your screws will sit right. You don't want the screw to penetrate the top layer of the sheetrock, but you also don't want it exposed because it's going to create a bunch of issues when you go to mud the sheetrock and, and actually finish it. So this is nice to have around. You can go through and fill your wall after and just give a quick little twist to any screws that may be exposed a little bit past the main surface of the sheetrock. Once the sheetrock's hung, you're going to need to to put a material, it's called corner bead, on all the outside corners of the walls. And that corner bead is typically made of plastic or metal. And that's what we keep a tin snips in the toolbox for. We can cut that corner bead so that it fits perfect around any contour. It's just like a scissors, it's easy to use. And then finally, we've got a hammer. And the hammer is in every toolbox. Basically, 
you may need to pull an extra nail that somebody missed when they were doing the demo phase. You may need to pound in a nail. You may get frustrated and need to throw this through the wall, but you'll have to fix the wall when you're done. And don't hit anybody with it, but hammer's always useful. That should probably be in every toolbox. Well, that, my friends, is a basic toolbox for drywall or to hang sheetrock. Now you can get this printable checklist off of our blog site at vivodesigns.net and if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us. Otherwise, I'll see you on your next project.